Mm. First of all, how good are heat up mugs? Hey everyone, today we're checking out the Airloop Snap. And I'm pretty sure Airloop invaded my thoughts because I always thought about making this as a product, even though I don't know how to make earphones, but look, they put in the work and they made it possible because I'm pretty sure this is the world's first three-in-one true wireless earbud, neck band earbud, and sports band thing earbud as well. So if you always wanted one, here it is. You can finally get one. And if you do want to grab one, I'll leave a link down below as well as timestamps because we go in depth. So if you're picky with your audio, so am I. Let's get into another picky review. All right, starting with physical features and design with the earbuds themselves, they are a little bit on the chunky side, but you've got some wingtip action. You've got some auto pause and play sensors. There's also a physical button on the top and on the side of the earbud to power them on and off and utilize all controls. The indicator lights on the side there and thankfully no unnecessary flashing action when music is playing. And of course, since this is a three in one earbud, you got a magnet on the bottom of the earbud there so you can attach the neck band on there. And the neck band here is super sturdy. The magnets are also strong enough. The magnets can only be so strong, so they attach really well to the neck band, but if you just let one like kind of hang loose while the neck band is around your neck, it might fall off. So you just gotta be a little bit cautious when handling the earbuds with the neck band on. And if you don't want the bulky neck band, you can just use the sports band as well, which kind of just attaches to the earbuds, which seems good in thought, but if you wanna charge the earbuds, you have to take this off. So it's not super seamless, but if you know you're just gonna leave them on most of the time until they run out of battery, then you should be fine. But a pro of the sport band, since it doesn't utilize the magnets, this means you can just let them dangle around and they'll stay on completely fine. Now into the comfort of the earbuds themselves, you're getting six sizes of ear tips included, some shallow ones and some slightly deeper ones. So you've got a whole heap of choice. The mediums worked best for me with the more shallow fit. And the actual fit here is quite deep. These go pretty deep into the ear canal, which does mean you get a little bit of that kind of weird suction feeling. So when, for example, you're clenching your jaw, kind of moving your mouth around or moving your head around as well, the earbuds do move around a little bit and this does affect the sound quality slightly, it kind of changes it around a little bit. You kind of lose some bass. It makes it sound sort of weird. This is a minor gripe. This is just for my ears as well. But apart from that, they're incredibly secure with that wingtip and you get three different sizes included as well. So overall, you can use these for any kind of training, running, CrossFit, weight training. There's no way they're gonna fall out. But if you're looking for more long-term use, since the earbuds are a little bit on the chunky side, I get some discomfort after about 45 minutes to an hour. And also, since they are quite chunky, if you have smaller ears, these might not fit you well. My ears are slightly above average. But anyway, if you wanna use your earbuds when training, these also have an IPX7 waterproof rating. So fine for sweat and rain, you can also submerge the buds in water. All right, now let's talk about battery life. I've got some crazy numbers to throw at you. You're getting a total of 80 hours with the earbuds in the case and a total of eight hours with the earbuds. Currently running my tests at the moment and they've actually surpassed eight hours at 70% volume. But I'll chuck up my results here so you can see. So that's the case and the earbuds. And with that neck band, since they attach magnetically, you're gonna get an additional 12 hours of juice from the neck band, which brings a total up to eight plus, eight plus 12. Whoa, that's, that's only 20, that's 20 hours. Is that what it is? Eight plus 12 is 20. 20 hours total with the neck band and the earbuds themselves. So if you're, you gotta drive around the country of Iceland, I think it takes about 24 hours and you can technically do it for as long as that. It's a weird comparison, but that's the first thing I thought of. So really impressive battery life. You're getting over a hundred hours, including everything total. But with that 80 hours from the case, this does mean the case is one of the biggest cases I've ever seen. It is built really well though. It kind of slides out, has some nice click action when you slide it in. There's also a little strap thing on the top there. So if you want to tie the case to your bag or something like that, you have the option for that as well. The magnets are incredibly strong on there. It feels really sturdy. You've got four indicator lights on the side and a USB-C port for charging with a cable included. You're also not getting any fast charge or wireless charging here. So again, keep in mind, the case is super chunky, but if you want some incredible battery life totals, then these are gonna be the go for you. Also, it would have been cool to be able to use the case as a battery bank since you've got so much battery life there, but just a minor gripe. And also pairing is really fast. They connect to your phone in about three to four seconds. When you take the earbuds, out of the case. All right, onto controls, and you can control everything here with that physical button on the top. I love the position of that, so you don't have to worry about digging the earbud into your ear canal. And like I said, where that logo is, that's also a button to power the earbuds on and off, which is obviously really beneficial when you're just using the neckband, so you don't have to put the earbuds in the case to turn them off. You just hold that down for two to three seconds, and they power off. To turn it back on, you press the button on the top 
to power on. You also get auto pause and play, which works seamlessly, but a slight con when using the neck band. Sometimes I like to have just like one earbud in and the other one resting underneath my shirt or just outside my shirt. I did find that the auto pause and play would kind of turn on and off randomly. And sadly, there's no way to turn the auto pause and play off. But an easy fix, if you just want to use one earbud and let the other one hang, you can just easily turn that off with a three second hold. You also don't get any beep feedback. This would have been nice when adjusting volume controls since it's a hold on either earbud to go up or down. So you don't really know how much you're increasing by, but look, you're just getting a little bit picky here. All right, onto connectivity, Bluetooth 5.0, you get SPC, AAC, and Aptex Codex. No latency on YouTube and Netflix, tested on an iPhone 12 Pro. With gaming, there is gonna be a little bit since there is no low latency mode, but it'll do the job for casual mobile games. And in my Bluetooth range test, I got 85% indoor. That's across 17 meters, downstairs, upstairs, through five walls, and 95% in my adult test across 27 meters in a clear open space. So definitely up there with the best of the best in terms of Bluetooth range. There is no multi-pairing, but you can use the left or right earbud individually, but this doesn't work in mono mode, so you're only gonna hear the one audio channel, but at least you can use one earbud at a time. All right, onto the microphone test. Not the best microphone. It doesn't pick up your voice that well. Blocks out background noise okay as well. But anyway, I'll just chuck up some tests here so you can hear for yourself. All right, here's a microphone test with the air loop snap. Currently just sitting in my room with no background noise around. All right, here we are in the outside world with the air loop snap on a nice sunny autumn day here. So hopefully the microphones are blocking out all the cars zooming around here and picking up my voice quite well. All right, before moving on to sound quality, a quick little drop on my Instagram here. If you want to stay updated with behind the scenes action of me and my audio ventures, link is down below. All right, on to sound quality. And starting with volume here at 100%, this is definitely loud enough. If you're a real crazy volume junkie, you might want like another notch, but honestly, for most of us, this should do fine. If you're looking for low level listening, not really getting it here, slightly loud at that lowest volume. And if you do listen to podcasts or music at low volumes, there is the tiniest bit of white noise. It's not super annoying, but if you don't like any white noise at all, there's just a little bit of it here. And I also just want to mention, you don't get any noise canceling here, but the passive noise isolation with that really deep fit is some of the best that I've ever tested. So you, you actually block out a decent amount of noise just with the ear tips themselves. All right, so how do they sound? Basically, to sum it up quickly, you chuck these in, you chuck on some songs. It doesn't matter what genre you listen to. You're not going to be like, okay, these are amazing, but they sound just really solid with any kind of music you throw at it. And this is basically because you just get a nice amount of bass. It hits deep. You're not getting like some subwoofer action, but, but definitely enough to suit all genres and never drown out the other frequencies as well. The mid range is also pushed nice and forward, creating clear vocals, female and male vocals. Distorted guitars have nice presence. You get nice impact. And the high end here, again, it's not like the best high end out there, but you're getting just enough, which allows for some nice instrument separation. You can hear all the details in a sound stage that is, again, not amazing, but good enough for true wireless standards. The only real slight con I have with the sound quality is when you're at those higher volumes above like 90%. If you're going pretty loud, the treble can get slightly harsh on some songs with percussion, hi-hats, or in like hard style. Some synths can get uh, a little bit harsh and vocals with those higher S's and that kind of stuff. But it's honestly in those high volumes, most of the time you'll be fine. So to kind of sum it up, definitely not a neutral or a flat sound. It's got a lot of emphasis. You get a lot of kick. You get a nice amount of punch as well because that bass isn't too overpowering. It basically just sounds good. And now this is where I would run through my genre rating checklist. And honestly, for most earbuds, it can kind of be varied for each genre but I'm basically just gonna lock in an eight out of 10 for every single genre here, just because the sound really does work well. We can call it a little bit of an all rounder when it comes to sound here for the genre rating checklist. Now, I know a lot of you think I'm lazy, but honestly, if I was to go through this, it's pretty much gonna be eight out of 10 uh, for all the genres there. And that even goes for DJs. Yes. All right, I kind of wrap it up here. The main cons to consider is that fit isn't the most comfortable. It has a bit of that suction feeling and the microphone quality isn't the best. And the case is on the larger side, but you're getting like 100 hours of battery life. And look, if you want to grab these, you're most likely going to be getting them for the three-in-one feature. And they definitely nail it when it comes to that. All right, thanks for tuning in. Please check out another one of my videos. I'm popping up right now. But in the meantime, stay tuned. And of course, stay picky with your audio because life's too short for crappy sound. See you in the next video. Bye now.